In today's video, we're going to walk through the servicedac.net Blazor components library and the built-in support for dark mode thanks to Tailwind CSS, and how you can add this to your next Blazor for .NET 8 application. The ServerStack Blazor Components Library has a growing list of great looking and useful Blazor components that are easy to use and integrate with your ServerStack services that have been updated for .NET 8. And thanks to Tailwind CSS, all these components include support for dark mode out of the box. Adding dark mode support to your own Blazor components and application is made easy thanks to dark mode and the dark mode toggle component that's already pre-configured in the Blazor templates. For example, by using the dark mode toggle component in the heading of your application, you can present a simple toggle to your users to switch your application and any of the Blazor service stack components between light and dark mode. Controlling the experience of each is controlled by the Tailwind CSS dark variant, which changes the way elements are presented when your application is being viewed in dark mode. And because the service stack Blazor components library has been updated for Blazor for .NET 8, you can use any of the components with either interactive render modes and some of the components even support the new static rendering. For example, the switch at the top right controlling dark mode is the dark mode toggle light component that can be used in static rendering. This means it can be used on every page of your application without introducing the requirement for a WebSocket connection for Blazor server applications or slow startup time for your application due to the requirement of downloading .NET WebAssembly dependencies. As a concrete example, we're going to create a new Blazor application using the Blazor template. We can do this by using the servicestack.net x tool with the command x new blazor space my app, or by downloading one of our templates from the servicestack.net forward slash blazor page. Navigating to servicestack.net forward slash blazor, we have the blazor template under the create new blazor app section. Providing a name and downloading the zip file, we can extract extract the contents to a local working directory, and open the solution with your favorite .NET IDE. Running the application will be greeted with a Blazor application with instructions on using this template. We can switch between dark and light mode as we navigate the different pages already set up for you in the template. We have grids of data with create and edit forms in the bookings and coupon pages, as well as a simple to-do application, a statically rendered weather page, and the ASP.NET Core identity profile page and login page, all set up with the of dark mode to show you how some of the service stack blazer components can be used. Taking a look at the code for the coupons page, we can see we get all this functionality in just one component, which is integrated with our specific auto query service. Here we're using the auto query grid component to create a read only view of our coupon table integrating with the query coupons auto query service, but it also supports create, update and delete auto query CRUD endpoints as well. Opening the code to the bookings page and we can see the use of the same auto query grid component, but this time you can see some of the different ways that you can customize the grid UI and integration to have more control over the user experience. We still have dark mode support and can customize part of the grid using child render fragments for more control. To have a look at the other Blazor components in the Service Stack Blazor library, we can use either of the hosted Blazor gallery sites at either blazor-gallery.servicestack.net, which runs the Blazor server interactive render mode, or blazor-gallery.jamstacks.net, which runs the WebAssembly interactive render mode. Both of these deployed projects have the same usage of the Service Stack Blazor components in their UI. So if you decide 
you need to switch from server rendering to WebAssembly rendering or run a mixture of both in your application. The only difference in using these with Blazor for .NET 8 will be the declared interactive render mode you use on each page. Let's go through each of the components we have in our Blazor gallery example. Starting with the auto query grid component examples, we have the context page. The first code example gives us a full create, read, update, and delete functionality just by using the default one line integration to a backing auto query service. The data model for the contracts page and related request details can be annotated with C sharp attributes for additional functionality such such as file upload, changing input type, and additional styling. The second context metadata example uses a custom columns child fragment to have more control over how each of the columns is presented in the grid. All of the child components of the grid include the create and edit form, which also supports dark mode, so we get a consistent visual by default even with our customizations. Moving on to the data grid, which is a visually the same as the auto query grid component, but it can be used with any data source by binding a list of objects to the items attribute on the component. This will dynamically create columns for visualizing your data in a grid, just like the auto query grid component, and you can use the columns again to customize how this data is presented. Then we have the auto forms components, which are an easy way to bind your service stack API endpoints to a visual form in Blazor for .NET 8. Input controls are dynamically created based on the type in the specified request DTO and optional attributes like the input attribute. All of the dynamically created inputs also support dark mode by default, meaning regardless of your interactive render mode, you can get an auto form that's integrated with any of your service stack services that looks great in light or dark mode with minimal effort. This same support also applies to the auto edit form, which supports an optional delete operation, giving us the full create, update, and delete functionality with just two configured components binding to their respective services. If you need more control over your forms, you can use the input components directly, such as as text select, date time, and text area input, among many others, which all support dark mode with Tailwind CSS by default. Validation errors also populate down to the individual input components in your auto forms, so your server validation can be completely reused in your Blazor for .NET 8 application. This validation binding also applies to the auto forms components as well, creating more reusability for your services giving you more time to streamline your Blazor application. And when it comes time to build your own custom Blazor components to meet your own requirements, you can just use the standard Tailwind approach using dark CSS variant name, which responds to the same dark mode toggle component, making it easy to integrate your own dark mode support that mixes in with the server stack Blazor components. Dark mode is becoming an expected feature on modern web applications, and it can be time consuming to support without proper tooling. The growing Service Stack Blazor library has a range of components that will integrate with your Service Stack services for your next Blazor application, while giving you a clear way forward with Tailwind to support dark mode in your next Blazor project. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback for our templates, videos, or the Server Stack Blazor Components Library, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, you can check out our other videos and join us in the Server Stack community through our Discord or GitHub discussions. Server Stack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.